Hey guys, John here. Let's make some pads with comb filters. So let's go to a new preset here and go to the analog engine and let's add all of these here. Let's make the second one a square and down an octave. So we have something. Something like that. And let's add all our voices. A little nice detune. So you have something kind of big to work with. Give us a little bit of envelope here. Okay, so we have a lot of content. This is kind of loud, so let's bring this down here. So for our first filter, like I said, let's go for comb, and then the mode, let's go to feedback. And this frequency, it's default at 261. Let's go all the way to 20K. And something, if you're messing around with comb filters, it's always a smart idea. Let's move these down here. And for our first effect here, we're going to have an EQ. We're going to come to this later. But the next one, let's go to a compressor and kind of just give it a strong ratio, maybe 8 to 1 or something like that, because comb filtering can get kind of out of control kind of quickly. So let's kind of dial this in here. Okay, so that's cool for now. So let's go back to our synth here and let's add another filter. And that's also going to be a comb filter as well. And we can leave this on the default here. And these are kind of tricky to tune, so that's kind of something you might want to spend some time with, but I kind of wanted to show you this cool kind of dreamy type of texture sound with some comb filters. So for the most part, we have our envelope here, maybe a little more release and some less sustain, increase our decay. So our release is about three seconds. Let's give our decay maybe almost about that. It's an interesting tone because it's, it's almost dissonant, but also in tune as well. It's kind of strange to wrap your head around. And what we can do to kind of bring this a little bit more to life, let's go to our sample engine. Let's turn this bad boy on and let's go down to our vocal folder and maybe, maybe one of these here, something like that. So we almost kind of have a vocal in there a little bit. And let's go to our effects here and kind of clean some stuff up. So that stuff, let's remove that. Give a little bit of high frequency content back. And what's kind of cool by doing this, we do kind of automatically get that kind of change over time with both of these comb filters kind of going on. It's kind of a very interesting sound. So let's go to our effects. Let's kind of add some more stuff here. So let's go for the delays. Kind of bring that a little bit in here as well. Give us some more stereo spread and make sure to bring this knob up for the high pass. We can kind of go a little bit crazy with delays because we're kind of making a big texture sound here. And we're going to switch out this reverb to a shimmer, something kind of like this here, and maybe a little bit of ducking can go a long way. Okay, so something that we can also do, let's bring our shimmer and our delay down here for our last thing. So basically right now we have two empty slots. We can try to use them all if we want to. So let's kind of check and see if we can maybe put like a chorus on there. Because the chorus kind of really softens it up, especially once we're kind of playing a couple notes here up in the higher registers. 
can really hear those kind of almost metallic-y sounds there. So adding a little bit of course can kind of soften that up a little bit. So now we always kind of want to do that filter modulation, right? But we're kind of stuck here using both of these combs in tandem, right? In, uh, in series. So what we can do is we go to our effects here and we have our last little slot here. And I kind of want this filter to filter our raw sound from the EQ, the compressor and the chorus Juno or the chorus Juno 6. And then we can kind of do our filter there and then the effects of the delay and the shimmer will happen after that. So with that being said, let's go to none here and let's add a, I always select multi-band, multi-filter here. And although we don't have all of our different models in here, which is kind of rough, it'd be crazy to do another comb filter here. But uh, yeah, maybe we can just kind of do a gentle low pass, something kind of like this. And that's something we want to have on a macro, right? So if our knob is down here on our knob, if it's down here all the way, let's use the first macro here, give this all 100% or up to 1.0. So this is essentially our cutoff here. So let's label this as cutoff. And we do want to have some resonance as well, which is going to be labeled Q here. So let's bring this all the way down and do the same thing with macro two and give this pretty much all the way. That's going to be kind of crazy. if we want that kind of effect here. So I'm gonna back it up maybe to like halfway or something like that. And yeah, or something like this. And it might be kind of nice to have this modulated a little bit by the second envelope here, kind of how we'd normally do on the synth page over here, but we're gonna be doing this in the effects panel. So with that being said, let's kind of see a decent depth amount here. So we need to increase the attack as well and the release, because we don't want it snapping back too quick. Steven's still a little too fast. Yeah, so that's kind of healthy there, and the decay and the release should be kind of similar. We're only at 500 milliseconds, so let's increase the decay a little bit here. Okay, so now we can increase our cutoff here to something kind of more manageable. And I generally like having these attack curves a little bit more convex. I'm actually going to reduce the depth here. So it's just a little bit of modulation. So it's not such an abrupt change. Maybe a little less depth, something kind of like that. Okay, so we've used all of our slots here and we have macro three and four. I might even add a little bit less low end here, so I might bring this kind of over and kind of just down, something like that. And this is an interesting sound because you're gonna find some different notes that really resonate well together. Some of them kind of clash, but some of them kind of go nicely. And it's all that weird dynamic. So it's a very interesting patch to play. You'll kind of see once you start playing with something like this. So uh, yeah, let's go for uh, the effects here and let's add macro number four. So EQ and compression is fine. So let's add the macro four to the Juno six. And right now it's 22. So maybe let's go to like 32, something like that. Turn this all the way up. Let's label this effects while we're here. 
And then for the multi-filter, that should be fine because that's not really an effect in that case, even though it's in the effects bank. And then we're going to go delay 34, so 0.34 right here. And then for our shimmer, we're at 47. Let's bring that down and put this up here to 0.47. And so I guess kind of kind of excessive here and maybe back off the ducking a little bit. I felt like I needed a little bit more uh, shimmer there. And maybe this attack is a little too fast, so it's not even a second. So let's increase that here. And down in the lower register, it's really nice, and it's, it doesn't get muddy, which is kind of cool. And what we could maybe do is increase, let's turn off our first analog engine here and kind of listen to the second one here. Maybe some unison might be interesting on that. Maybe back this volume off just a little bit. And this is the nice part without the five minute presets here, we can kind of really dial stuff in together. And if you like this concept, but you kind of don't really like that top end so much here, you can always disable this analog engine and you're gonna get much less of that. It really depends on what you want there. So I'm gonna turn this back on here cause it's kind of nice, I like that. Okay, so one last thing we can do is since we have another macro, what's kind of nice is we can turn on both of these noises here, send these both to the second filter because we don't need them going through both. And let's turn this volume down here for both of them. And for the third one, let's kind of add this to both of these volumes and maybe increase these to, I want to say 0.75 to so 75% of this here and kind of see how that sounds in the mix if we want something kind of more textury. Kind of like that wind in the background or texture or something like that. So let's call this texture or no noise texture. That might be kind of nice noise. T-E-X-T-U-R-E, -E, texture. And we can bring up our volume just a little bit. Okay, so what should we call this? Uh, let's call this the, God, it's gotta be something with comb, right? Comb, the comb pad, that's, oh God, that's so stupid. Comb home, right? Because it gets even worse. Whatever, dude. Okay, comb home pad. That's going to be what it's called. So if you want to get the comb home pad, then, God, then there's a link in the video description below. It can't be yours. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks for watching. And uh, have fun tuning this one. It's kind of challenging. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.